Hi viewers, welcome to Yasono. Let's talk about eFAST. The purpose of FAST is to identify free fluid and not to diagnose solid organ injury or hollow viscous injuries. It is non-invasive and can be repeated as many times, which is probably the important feature of FAST, in spite of having readily available trauma CE. Ideally done by a physician who is not involved in the trauma code. Life-threatening amount of blood can be lost as active hemorrhage outside the body, in the thigh compartments of bilateral femur fractures, the pelvis, abdomen, or chest. FAST plays a major role in detecting free fluid in peritoneal cavity, pleural, pericardial cavities, and There are many studies to support using FAST. FAST has reduced rates of DPL and CT utilization in trauma. I have added few studies in the description below. EFAST is additional scanning of bilateral anterior hemithoraces to look for pneumothorax. Average scan times vary between operators and patient factors like being in pain, unable to lie supine play a major role too. Ideally should complete in two minutes. Standard views in FAST are as follows. The right upper quadrant, RUU, to include Morrison's pouch, and the right costophrenic pleural recess. The left upper quadrant, LUQ, to include the spleno-renal recess, and the left costophrenic pleural recess. The pericardial from subxiphoid or parasternal transthoracic. The pelvic cavity in two planes. Bilateral anterior hemithoraces in E fast. Look at this illustration showing standard views of EE fast. Probe marker is pointing towards patient's right in transverse views and towards patient's head in sagittal views. Probe of choice low frequency curvy linear probe. We can use phased array probe too. Start at a depth of 18 centimeters and adjust as you scan. With the probe marker towards patient's head start scanning in mid-axillary line. Locate liver and right kidney or identify right diaphragm and scan downwards. Gentle movements will get the rib shadows out of the focus. The right upper quadrant view perihepatic view is commonly viewed as the classic image of trauma ultrasound. It allows for visualization of free fluid in the potential space between the liver and right kidney. The transducer is initially placed in a coronal orientation in the mid-axillary line over an intercostal space of one of the lower ribs. The indicator on the transducer should be directed toward the patient's head. In addition, fluid above and below the diaphragm in the costophrenic angle or subdiaphragmatic space can be seen. Moving the transducer cordad brings the inferior pole of the kidney and the superior aspect of the right paracolic gutter into view. Majority of peritoneal fluid collections are detected in the perihepatic region. Make sure patient is supine for at least 20 minutes. Free fluid in the hepatorenal space or Morrison's pouch, bordered by Glisson's capsule of the liver and Gerota's fascia of the right kidney. Fluid above the diaphragm. Caution while interpreting normal variants like double line sign caused by perinephric fat enclosed in fascial planes. Elongated left lobe of liver also called beaver tail liver may mimic subcapsular splenic hematoma. Double line sign. The left upper quadrant or perisplenic view can be challenging to obtain because the spleen does not provide as large a sonographic window as the liver and the examiner frequently needs to reach across the patient in order to access the left upper quadrant. In contrast to the perihepatic view, ideal placement of the transducer in the left upper quadrant is generally more cephalad and posterior. 
A good starting point is the posterior axillary line in the 9th and 10th intercostal spleen with homogeneous cortex and echogenic capsule located posterolateral. Free fluid in the left upper quadrant collects differently than in the perihepatic area, primarily because the phrenicocolic ligament restricts fluid from filling the splenorenal interface. Consequently, fluid is most commonly detected in the subphrenic space and appears as a crescent-shaped fluid collection that is bordered superiorly by the diaphragm and inferiorly by the spleen. Splenorenal recess negative for free fluid. Left upper quadrant view showing presence of perisplenic fluid. Gross free fluid between spleen and diaphragm. Also seen left pleural effusion. The pelvis is an important and potentially underappreciated area for detecting free peritoneal fluid. Since it is one of the most dependent and easily visualized portions of the peritoneal cavity, fluid collections may be seen here before being detected in other areas. The transducer is initially placed just superior to the symphysis pubis in a transverse orientation with the indicator directed to the patient's right. From here the transducer can be angled to fully visualize the perivesicular area. It is also important to image the bladder in a sagittal orientation. When the bladder is empty direct the transducer inferior and posterior to the pubic ramus. When full, the distended bladder provides an excellent acoustic window to pelvic structures. Uterus Normal uterus has a pear-shaped appearance and is located superior and posterior to the bladder. Acidic fluid around the bladder. Findings can be as severe as bowel loops floating in free fluid to small amount of fluid in rectovesical pouch and rectouterine pouch, pouch of Douglas. Cardiac views. Use same curvilinear probe. Phased array probe can be used too. A four-chamber subsophoid view is performed with the transducer oriented transversely in the subcostal region and the indicator directed to the patient's right. The transducer should be held almost parallel to the skin of the anterior torso as it is pointed to a location just to the left of the sternum toward the patient's head. Gas in the stomach frequently obscures views of the heart but this can be minimized by using the left lobe of the liver as an acoustic window. From the subsophoid orientation, fluid will initially be seen between the right side of the heart and the liver, which is the most dependent area visualized. In the parasternal orientation, Fluid will initially be seen posteriorly as it outlines the free wall of the left atria and ventricle, but may also be seen anterior to the right ventricle, particularly in cases of circumferential effusion. The descending aorta is an important landmark for differentiating pericardial from pleural effusions. Pericardial fluid collects anterior to the descending aorta, while pleural fluid will be seen posterior to this level. E of E fast. Begin with the transducer oriented in the sagittal plane placed in the midclavicular line over the third or fourth intercostal. Look for pleural sliding, shimmering of pleura on B mode, seashore pattern on M mode, lung pulse. Look at the shimmering of pleura due to sliding of visceral pleura over parietal pleura. Pneumothorax is identified by absent pleural sliding and lung point on B mode. Barcode or stratosphere sign on M mode. Look absence of pleural sliding evidenced by no shimmering. And the lung point where the parietal and visceral pleura are still together suggesting the border of pneumothorax.
M mode showing barcode sign on left suggesting absent plural sliding, and seashell pattern on the right which means plural sliding is present. Pediatric fast exam less sensitive, but similar specificity, than in adults because more pediatric abdominal injuries do not have associated free fluid. According to American College of Emergency Physicians, only 15% of pediatric trauma centers in the United States have adopted FAST as an assessment tool. One reason for the low adoption of FAST in the evaluation of children is the rare occurrence of unstable children with intra-abdominal injury. Though current studies doesn't show satisfactory evidence in pediatric population, some research, however, has suggested combining the FAST exam with a thorough physical examination and sound clinical assessment can produce effective results up to 97% of the time for selected patients needing surgical intervention. As the vast majority of pediatric solid intra-abdominal organ injuries are managed non-operatively with observation, Thus one important strategy for using FAST in pediatric trauma evaluation may be the use of serial FAST exams to guide clinical decision making. Pitfalls Misinterpretation of the double line sign, a DLS, as free fluid, and an elongated left hepatic lobe as a splenic hematoma. Fluid in the perisplenic window is more often present in a nearby left paracolic gutter inferior to the spleen also look under diaphragm. Limited utility in the detection of retroperitoneal fluid and small intraperitoneal fluid. False negative fast may be influenced by the severity of both intra-abdominal and other injuries. E fast may overlook pneumothorax particularly at the areas around the lung apices and bases, which account for two-thirds of false negative tests. Must-dos. Supine position. Serial FAST scans. Rule in principle and not rule out. Use FAST in right clinical context. Report as a presence or absence of free fluid and not positive or negative.